So for those of you that follow the channel, you'll know I'm a big proponent of bringing down energy costs. Not just for those of us that can afford solar panels and batteries, but for everybody. There is no excuse for the energy prices in the UK to be what they are. Today we're going to look at something called zonal pricing. This is something that's been put forward by Greg Jackson from Octopus. We're going to dig into what is zonal pricing and we're going to look at the companies that are objecting to it and see if we can understand why. So very recently I read a news article by the CEO of Centrica, uh, a gentleman called Chris O'Shea. Chris uh, has come out uh, very vehemently against the calls by Greg Jackson from Octopus for what we call zonal pricing. Zonal pricing, we'll go into what it is and the details of that in a moment. But I thought it was very interesting that this man particularly came out against it. Being one of the providers of energy in this country and constantly understanding how many people you know, are unable to pay their energy bills, you would think he'd want to do something about it. And then very recently, I also saw that Dale Vince, the CEO of Ecotricity, also came out against zonal pricing. And we'll go into what they said in a moment. So let's start with what is zonal pricing? Well, today, the way energy is priced in the UK is just broken. So it doesn't matter if you're a gas producer, you're producing electricity from a gas-fired power station, you're a nuclear power station, you're a wind farm operator, a solar farm operator, or even tidal. Energy is priced at the most expensive source, which is always going to be gas or nuclear. That means that it doesn't matter how cheaply you can produce energy from solar or from uh, wind, when it, that energy is sold on the global energy market, it will be priced up at the price of the gas produced energy. So there is one wholesale price for energy. This means we have the most expensive energy costs in Europe. Now the real kick to the stomach here is as a country, we have huge amounts of wind. And I'm not talking about old windbags like me. I'm talking about massive offshore and smaller onshore wind farms. And when we have a lot of wind, specifically in the North Sea and the Irish Sea at winter, we sometimes have to shut those wind turbines down to allow the gas and the nuclear plants to continue to operate. Now, I understand you can't just shut a nuclear power plant down, but you can turn off a gas power plant. Yes, it might take a little bit longer to bring it back online when you need it, but turning off renewable energy because it's a little bit harder to operate a gas power plant just doesn't seem right to me. This also means that those that live next to the power generators pay as much for their energy as those that live far away. Now, we all know in the UK, we've got a whole load of NIMBYs who say, I don't want a wind turbine near my house. Well, if you're willing to have a wind turbine near your house, shouldn't you get some of the benefits? Shouldn't you get cheaper power? Because that power is generated and used locally. Why should electricity that's generated in Scotland and transported through a cable to those in London be the same price? If it's generated in Scotland and used in Scotland, it should be cheaper. This is what zonal pricing is designed to solve. So Octopus CEO has proposed zonal pricing to the government. This would break the UK up into 12 different zones, each with their own pricing model. Now, for those that say, oh, that can't happen, we can't do that. We already do that today for standing charges. We have different DNOs in each region and each DNO sets their own price. So why can't we just replicate that model for the actual cost of the electricity? If you live next to a generator and the energy is available cheaply, you should be able to buy it cheaply. You shouldn't have to pay an exorbitant amount just so that a company that runs a gas power plant can continue to produce energy that's not actually needed in the grid at that time. Now, one of the benefits of this is it would encourage large energy users to locate their businesses close to the supplies of energy. Now, the oil and gas industry learned this a long time ago. When they built oil refineries, they built power stations right next door to them because it was the cheapest way to power the oil refinery. Now, the modern day equivalent, those industries that use large amounts of energy, are data centers. Data centers use enormous amounts of power to run the computers, to cool them, and to run all the network infrastructure that goes in and out of them. 
There are more data centers in London than anywhere else in the UK. That makes no sense to me. Put them right next to the power generation. It's not like these buildings uh, are particularly pretty. You just put them in a big warehouse, you have a very small number of staff that operate them, and they use a huge amount of power. This would also help break that north-south divide because people would start to think about locating their companies and their industries closer to where the power is generated because it would be cheaper for their businesses to run. So why are O'Shea and Vince opposing this? Let's start with Centrica. Now, as I said, in this article, O'Shea says he would rather than break up the UK into zonal prices, we should build more energy storage. He, he basically argues that we need more infrastructure, we need to invest money into the grid, we need to invest money into storage in the grid so that we don't have to turn off the wind turbines. Who's going to pay for it? I can tell you exactly who's going to pay for that. You are. What is Centrica's business model? Obviously, Centrica is a company you probably all know as British Gas. British Gas and Centrica get most of their gas from the North Sea. We know that North Sea reserves are dwindling. We're past peak gas in, from the North Sea. And over the next few years, that gas is going to become less and less, which means they're going to have to import more gas. Their profits are directly linked to supplying gas, both domestically and to the gas-fired power stations. They also own a 20% stake in British nuclear power. So it's absolutely in their interest to keep energy prices linked to the high prices of gas. This helps maximise their profits from their electricity generation arm, not just from the British nuclear power investment, but also from the electricity that's generated by burning their gas. But let's take a look at their claim that we should build more storage. So rather than turn the wind turbines off, we should have enough storage in the grid to be able to take that power, store it, and use it later. Grid-level storage is very expensive. It's basically large battery banks or infrastructure like the Dunorwig power station, where we have a lake at the top of the mountain and a lake at the bottom of the mountain and a power station between them. So who's going to pay for this? Well, they're probably going to look to the government to fund it because we've set up a culture in this country where big companies don't take risks with their own money. They only take risks with public money. So we, the consumer, are going to end up paying this back through levies on our electricity bill. Everyone complains about the green levies that are on our electricity bill, but they would add this cost of building this infrastructure that they're going to own onto your bills. So you'd end up paying to build their business and building it in a way that lets them keep the electricity prices high. Seems fair, doesn't it? You know, we, we should all contribute to Centrica to help build out their infrastructure so that they can keep our energy prices high. Now let's take a look at Dale Vince. Dale is the owner of Ecotricity, one of the smaller players in the British energy industry. Um, Dale is famous for being a hippie living in a caravan that built a wind turbine, um, and as now they have a large number of wind farms all over the country, generating approximately 82 megawatts. They also invest in solar farms, but they are one of the green energy suppliers in the country. So you'd think Dale would be in favour of bringing down electricity costs a little bit, helping people out, because it fits with his brand. But a few years ago, he branched out into something called green gas. Now, this is not what we think of as Donald Trump and green coal and all these other nonsense terms. Green gas is gas that is generated from grass. Dale is actually building what he calls grass mills, where we take large fields, we let them sit with grass in them, we cut the grass, we use that to generate gas. Now, I don't know how well this works. I don't know what the, uh, the yields are from this. It sounds like an experiment to me. But the gas that he generates is sold at the market rates for gas. So both Vince and O'Shea have vested interests in keeping the status quo. They want to maximise their investments. They want to get as much money from you, the customer, as they possibly can. Greg Jackson's trying to do something different. He seems to be on a mission to try and bring down energy prices, which does seem to be a little bit at odds because they do have some generation capability themselves. But I think Greg is trying to fix a problem that others are shying away from. Will zonal pricing work? 
To be honest, I don't know. But it's worth a try. We have to do something. It's just wrong that a country that has so much capability to generate all its own energy is putting people in the position where they have to choose, do I heat my home or do I feed my family? That's not a situation we should ever be in. We've got the most expensive energy in Europe right now, and this is because the companies that are supplying it have a vested interest in keeping those costs as high as they can to bring in extra profits for their shareholders. Now, it's been rumoured that Ed Miliband will make a decision on zonal pricing this summer. So fingers crossed that he actually makes a decision and does something about it. But I suspect what will probably happen is we'll just continue doing what we've always done. Now, what do you think? Do you think zonal pricing would work? Do you think zonal pricing would be fairer that those that live next to the power generation should have access to cheaper rate electricity? Or are you a, no, we're all in it together, we should all pay the same amount of money? Let me know in the comments what you think. My gut feeling is that zonal pricing will have an effect on energy prices. Will that effect be quite as big as Greg Jackson would like to see? Only time will tell. But I know one thing, if we don't do anything, nothing's gonna change. It just remains for me to say thank you very much for clicking on this video. I really do appreciate it. Um, by all means, hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. I will, of course, post links to both of the articles that I discussed in this video. You can find them down in the description. I'm going to sign off, and if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.